Welcome, and I'm Madeline, and these are my, this is my place to display lots of pictures of the family. You probably didn't recognize me there. <laughs> that was my brother. We, we were two years and two days apart, so we, mom took us and got us our picture. He was, let's say I was about four, he would have been six. A graduation picture, I was 17. Well, I remember when I was oh, six, seven maybe, and it was just a lack of money. My, my father, well, it, he was not decent. But then as I got older, things changed quite a bit, and we had to move, and and find a place and oh, it just went on and I and I went to live with some relatives that sort of thing yes I enjoyed school really it was my way we didn't have parties and things so school was a party <laughs> I the first job I had was when I went to work for an oil company in Pennsylvania I was 17 I graduated on Friday and on Monday I went to work, I got a hundred dollars a month and it was an oil company. It helped me when I came here and I had had a little bit of uh, backing with an oil company. It was office work but I got hired right away and they got stuck with me for 32 years. I stayed long enough. I got promotions and it, it was a good job for me. I didn't go to college. I couldn't go to college. I had to earn, I had to earn enough to make, feed myself and my mother, and that's the way it was. I have, was sent down here to take notes and things for the guys that were checking things here on the equipment. Paul was on the phone talking about me, Can I? and he t was telling somebody, and here she comes in her see-through negligee. <laughs> and and uh, Paul Stanley got, said, well, what about her husband? Doesn't he get mad when she comes down? He said, oh, she's not married. <laughs> That's how we got acquainted. He called and s told me that he was had planned to ask me out to dinner, but I al had already left. And I said, well, next time I come down, I'll let you know. Well, he fixed that. That was the next weekend. Sent me a ticket to come down, you know, on the train. Yeah, I liked him. I thought he was pretty nice. Stanley was in the same situation. He didn't have very much money when he, when he took up the GI Bill. He went to school uh, for um, almost a year, well, before he even went to Berkeley. He knew that's where he wanted to go. Stanley was, well, my God, he, even early on, I can remember little things he talked about, that he would fix things. And uh, he was a dreamer. He wanted to be a pilot. And he was still young. And they, need, they needed young ones, and he was so good. He managed to get, get through without losing the plane and uh, a life. I mean, he always, he, one of his first, first, best things that he liked to say was, nobody that flew with me got a Purple Heart. The fact that he, when he was flying and he was smart enough to see that you don't want to go up and drop, you went through it in. I don't know how many were, did that, but he did that and that's what happened. He, he hit his target. They, they knew how to hit the target by doing that. And he saved a lot of Americans' lives. Yes, he did. Yeah. He was a, he was a hero. 
Stanley feels he owes the, uh, the veterans the same thing he got from the GI Bill. If it hadn't been for that, he might not have had his opportunities that he did have, and he always felt like that was important to him. You have a chance here to do better in life than you might have, and uh, it's an opportunity, but you gotta work for it, though. I mean, it's just not a handover. You've got to put your nose down to work and make sure you know what you're doing. Um, Stanley would say, get your rear in gear, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> What, what do you think Stanley would think of what you're doing? I think he'd give me a big hug. <laughs> I think so too. I think he'd be pleased that I'm doing this because he also was doing it all along. 